That's good, guys. I need to do this poster for a live event we're gonna do in which my clothing brand, No Free Will, will be in it. So I need to do a poster that I want to do prints for it to then sell on the spot. So let's open the file. Oh, sorry. I didn't change the scene. What a fucking noob. Like, that's good, right? First to, to the file, let's create a new one. And here I'm gonna use a preset that I already have. That is the dimensions that I use on my print shop. It's the perfect size for the, the, the best quality and a large size. So the, it's 16 by 20 inch, 300 DPI. Like the poster is gonna be around the brand No Free Will. So I'd like to play with some concept or really big word. It needs to be a poster that it's gonna work like hanged on a wall so it's not really for social that's something that usually we need to think about when we're making a poster like where is it gonna sit because it changed a bit like when you're making a poster maybe it's a good poster but it's not the same a poster for social media or a poster that's gonna sit in the real world you know so in here i want to do like a several hierarchy levels so let's start just to be with a big word and throw it in the canvas and see what we got but I think it's a bit long, the word that I wanted something like shorter. Let's try different fonts. I'm not one of those designers that knows the names of the fonts. I just type and scroll. Nothing wrong with that, really. Also, we can stretch the font here to make it fit better. But I'm not a fan of that kerning that it has. And I'm going to lose a lot of space. So let's think of another word. Here, for example, when I work all of my graphics, I like, I like to keep them, like, for example, in a, in a, in a place like this. And I can uh, work on them. Uh, already here and then I start to create like this like graphic universe let's say of the pieces I make and then I like to like drag from here and start to make sort of like a brand of art you know what I mean to fill the outlines to do it better object expand fill and stroke and then you get rid of the outline we do the divide and then we can clean these sections you see now it's selecting like the inside. So if I move it, you can see there, then I, when I export it to Photoshop, it's gonna make the entire shape like opaque and we don't want that. For example, here you see like there, then we get rid of it like so when we see another. Sorry, what I'm doing here, like I'm selecting, I know the shape is there, so I'm selecting and then getting rid with shift click of the this black part to see what we with what I have, right? And you can see here it selected like the shape that I need to get rid of that I couldn't click before because I have this in my way, like this this shape. I can't click on the edge and get the shape that I need because when I did the divide, all the overlapping shapes, it, it, it makes separate shapes out of them and I need to get rid of those. So you see if I do this and select everything and then I click here, it gets rid of that internal part or rather select it and then I get rid of it. And let's see if I bring this to Photoshop. I'm gonna leave this here because I'm gonna use it later. But back to the poster. In turn, I think it's like, it's better, it's more potent and it's shorter. That's what I'm looking for. Like this, I'm gonna grab some pictures. This is the t-shirt. I'm not really Feeling this is determined, like word, because it's it looks like determined, like self-determined. You know, it's not really playing to the to the thing that I wanted it to play, like the no free will thing, like the the thing of having no actual decision power. You know, like this actually kind of means means the opposite, right? Or I can fix it later. I just want to get some elements in there first. Actually, this is the my vector pack, the the one that I have on my store. Like this is the original file, and then I started to really fuck it up and play and play with it, right? So I think this graphs like really go well with this because they really play in with the idea of having no free will because it's all variables right variables that are already determined and i think graphics are a good element to try portray that idea go well also because of the mod modularity aspect that i want to give the piece like everything kind of like fitting right the complete detachment of the result is more of a design syndrome thing like my personal brand let's say but i, I like to keep it like close to to everything that i do and right now starting to play with for example the the guy that we are forming here with a picture 
and the and this graph. Well, this is really simple, but you see here, for example, it's, it's already starting like sort of work, you know, like you have a big word and then it's counterbalanced by another kind of smaller thing on the top and a really small thing at the bottom. And then you can start to, to like to pull, to create tension between the points in the piece. So that's really important to you in your designs. I had this teacher that your posters or when you make a piece, it needs to scream, to talk to you and to whisper to you. And that's what it means that it needs to have a really clear message that draws the eye, like this big word or, or clear gesture that draws you in. And then you talk to the, the one seeing the piece with what is the piece about, right? And then the whisper is like the details and the things that really close the idea of what you want to make. So that's been really helpful for me. I really go back to that when I'm making a piece. I just make, and you, if you want to make it even easier, just make big things next to smaller things next to smaller things, right? It's a, an oversimplification, but it's a cool and fast way to add depth to your pieces in a, in a clear in a clear way. So right now I'm just adding those to make the piece uh, have a bit more a bit more dimension. So yeah, I'm not going gonna go really crazy about the grid. I don't like making super uh, tidy tidy organized grids. This one is not even gonna be symmetrical, right? You would need to organize it really and trace it and then place around. I don't take, then tend to do it like that. For this, I like to keep it like more playful, you know, and really, really have fun with it. I'm not here for making a, like a, oh, a conceptual graphic define, this design poster. I want to do something that, that looks, would look cool on a wall, you know? <laughs> And then all these patterns, maybe you don't see them right away, but your brain recognizes them and you make these predictable patterns. So the brain really locks on into those stuff. That, that's why grid works. I'm gonna play a bit with enlarging this like to a ridiculous degree. I also have, for example, from the clothing brand, I have like the same type of document. I made also like a little system of of little like, elements and things that go with the brand so I can really easily grab them and, and repeat them over the spam of several pieces to really make the identity right. Poster is gonna be like two colors because I'm gonna screen print this. You see if you set you're in a in a group and you set it to pass through the group uh, blending mode, it's gonna just stack all the blending modes as if the group wasn't even there. Like the group in, in this part, it would be just like an organization thing. But if I set it to, to multiply, for example, it's gonna stack everything that's within the group and then to the result of that is going to multiply it like it's not going to apply the multiply like stacking down you know what i mean like for example if i go here and i do a, a black and white filter it's going to do it just to these two images after it goes to the to the part below for example if i make a new layer here and i paint with red for example you see it's red because it's not collapsing all the effects on top of each other outside the group you see, if I go to the group and I set it to pass through, you see how it, the black and white is starting to affect this layer here. So I turn it on and I set it to, if I, even if I set it to normal, it's going to just do it to this, to this layer. And now actually I'm going to make a, make a medium stipple. I'm going to set it here. This is a, an action that I made for doing this stipple effect, but it's not out yet. I'm working on it. See how we can control and have a bit of a bit of more gradation in the middle. That looks cool. Actually, this stroke that I made here by mistake, like, kind of looks interesting because it sort of breaks like that line that we have here. That it, it like they're really different and it sort of looks intentional, which it wasn't, but it looks like that. So. We could roll with it. I don't know. Not really what I had in mind, but hey, that's what <laughs> making pieces is all about. You know, sometimes beautiful mistakes happen. I'm going to leave it for the time being. You see how I, if I set the group to normal, how it blends like that. But if I set it to multiply, like it stamps, it, it stamps over the, the red stoosh or whatever it, whatever it is. I'm going to leave it to normal. I think I like the, I think I like it better this way. Still not completely sold on the world because I wanted to do something like heftier, larger, like this, you know, something more condensed, a bit more like little details on here and maybe in here, and then a word in the middle of the, of the chunkier one, let's say. I really like this type also, so I'm gonna keep it. I'm right here like stretching words from the handles. My typography teacher would just fucking kill me, you know what I mean? But Chaos, I don't know. 
I don't know about the world. Oh, you know what? Let's ask ChatGPT. You know, like give me a short, give me a list of short words around the concept of no free will of short evocative evocative words around the concept of no free will to use in a poster let's see oh you see determinism i was wanted to you fated fated is fucking let's go enforced compelled constructed inexorable control you see like this is one good case of use for ai you see, because maybe I didn't have the vocabulary to come up with these words, but I can read them. And if the concepts like really apply because I know them, like then you can start and it's not the AI doing the thinking for you. Like you need to add to this on top of it, right? Bound it's a really good word because you can think of it like really graphically. I think the letters that it uses, the B and finishing with the D, it's gonna give us some nice round edges in the in the corners of the word that I wanted because I'm gonna say it, I think, I don't know. I'm gonna show you. Bound, let's go. I'm gonna do now it's control click on the thumbnail to get the selection of the word and I'm gonna go do a, a solid color layer in the color black and in here I can really go crazy with it and now what we're gonna do is gonna we're still within the mask right when you go to image adjustment curves it's gonna make them like destructively within the layer you're in Right. If you go to layer, new adjustment layer and the curves is going to create the layer that does the adjustment on top. Right. But in this time for the for the mask, the only way you can do it is through adjustments in image and go to curves. Right. So you can start to play with this, make stuff like this to really start playing with it and see what you can come up with. Something like this. You see, you get this grain in this part, which looks, co which looks cool, I think. But I wanted to do like a violent like lip, like a really like a double lip. Something like this. And to this, we can also add some some effects from the filter gallery. This is a distort glass that I don't really love. That's it. Let's do a half tone pattern. And we're gonna add a new effect on top of the of the one that we just did. We're gonna do a torn edges and play with the contrast till we kind of see till we can kind of see like the half tone below it. I think I'm gonna add a, add a distort, distortion, displays 10 out of 10, placement map, have this paper one, like that, looks good. The one that I did here, and I missed like sort of the details in the middle, so we can go back again, control click on the layer thumbnail, and we do the same. We go to filter, noise, actually we can do the pontage eyes, let's see what we get. And we get that and you see that we get that texture from within and then we close it and the texture like translates to the to the thing i'm thinking about the composition a bit again we think i think i need to make a like a larger chunk this works come on get the fuck out of here like this printed like in a in a fluor orange like in white paper with with black ink on top like and actually let's do this one and let's just present it like in a different color just to see it's not gonna be this color I, I would make this like like a like a fluor orange but i really like that typography because now we can add the other one on top but you see how all these like messaging quotes and things that i started to play like before they all like kind of bleed into each other because I have like these sort of topics that I like to do for my pieces. So then I can go back and, and, and grab things and, and mesh them together, like make a sort of Frankenstein of every piece with, with work that I have re already done before, you know. It gives it, I think, like a more to drive the point home, you know, about the pieces that I make and the concepts that I like to, to, to tackle for my pieces. And to this one, what I'm going to do, I'm going to duplicate it again just to keep it at hand. I'm going to create the outlines for this. Here I'm going to shift the stroke with the inside color and I'm going to make it a bit larger and I'm going to shift it to the outer part so we get that sort of effect you know you see here for example how the U it's it's coming in and the N it's sort of leaving a gap that's a bit wider than here on the D so to balance it out maybe we need to close this a bit and here we open it 
a bit more. There is no mathematical measure for this. You just need to, to see it, it, if it looks better, if it looks jarring in any way. And here is the same, you know, maybe we need to take this a bit further. Scale, shear, and here we're gonna shear it like this. And actually now I'm starting to think a, a bit more like little paragraphs of text. I'm gonna give it to ChatGPT, like give me some small paragraphs talking about the, the bound concept around having no free will like this i like for example when i do this it's not like i'm trying to to scrape chat GPT for like quotes you know but sometimes you get for me for example that i'm not a native like english speaker for example something like questioning the fundamentals like this is like a powerful question the fundamentals right it's a cool like tagline i think that could work for the poster like rebellion with our souls it's also kind of powerful silent rebellion also again it's really like contrasty you know that kind of things sort of work like you just suppose something with sounds like the opposite like this idea I like also, like because you feel like you're like you're chained and you're you're obliged to do a thing. But on the other hand, it trips you of guilt and of responsibility, I think, which is something that I, I, I don't really necessarily like vibe to. But but for the sake of the poster, I think it it works like to make the dual thing. This I like, you see, by deterministic principles. Here, but to the bound, I wanted to add some of the tribal shapes, which I used in the t-shirt design, Neo Tribals. And we have these shapes, and this one and this one. And one cool, cool thing that you can do, it's this, we're going to go to, sorry, the Pathfinder. We're going to merge it so we get that thing like gone. And now it's all one shape. We're going to grab this tribal that we did here. And while, while pressing Alt, we're going to merge it there. You see, by pressing Alt, and now what's cool about this is that it's merged, but we can still go in and move this about. So we can do this, invert it, and we can enlarge the, the stroke. Still, we can't like make it to the outside, but we can play a bit and and maybe play with the tribal shape. And yeah, also graphically, I think the the world like being bound with the tribal shape, like it's some sort of main brain, like really, I don't know. It looks cool and I think I give it that purpose. And I think it makes sense from that point. Also, it, it's sort of like Evangelion-esque, you know, like these shapes. So once we, we have this, we're gonna go to object, expand appearance and there you have it like all like already like merged like you can't edit this it is what it is and now we can change the outline to the outside and yeah looks fire oh, what i was thinking it's also we can do like the inner like the inner part now what we have done it, it selected the inside shape because i want to do this in white select modify and expand it a bit like one or two or three pixels you see, then I expanded it and I'm going to make a solid color in white and bring it below the this layer. So we get that outline and we get it like this, you know. Like with these settings, like really light, you get something like that. And then on top, a torn edges and you, you play a bit with the, with the settings and you get that sort of, of finish that it looks really cool. Yeah, it looks amazing. Now actually let's go to the bound and for this one, let's do this action and you see it gave it like a little, like roughen up. I added those shapes here because I don't want it to be like a poster about the shirt because this is going to be maybe sitting in someone's like living room or studio or whatever. And I don't want it to be like a poster of a t-shirt. I want it to be like a poster, like a brand poster or whatever, but more open concept, not so much about a product, you know? I really like the composition like this. I need something here to, I think, to balance it out because it's like the poster is kind of falling like in, in the direction, in this direction, you know? Like I need something here, I think. I want to see what happens if I make this. Yeah, this works better, I think. 
it makes this one thing, this one thing, and this part at the bottom, it makes it like a different segment of the piece. And now you see it's not like falling below. It gives it a bit more breathing room, you see? Go back to ChatGPT and see if we can grab some more, some more quotes. Also, the the sword is kind of funny because it it plays it plays out right to the concept of the a rebellion, like a silent rebellion. Like it makes sense. This margin here, we still I think we need something to really tidy it up. I'll show you something from an upcoming setback that I'm working on. It's gonna be called assembly, and it's all like like these sort of images, you know, user manual, user experience, like uh, little diagrams that I think go well with these kinds of concepts because I really like existential and really ought to see like really figurines of people like showing you how a thing it's supposed to be used. This is kind of funny because it's it it looks like it's telling you like just jump right, like telling you how to commit fucking suicide. Looks fire, you see? That little like icon telling you to, to fucking jump. I think we need something here and, and it will be done. Add some fucking textures. Let's just do one clean, you know? Like that, boom. Instant gratification. Maybe I'll tweak a bit with the curves layer. Looks fucking sick. Oh my God, I love it. Oh yeah, my guys, that was it. So that was all my guys i hope you liked it see you in the next one if you really enjoyed what i just showed you uh, you can support me or, or or the channel by shopping some of the, my graphic design assets you can maybe copy print or even just subscribing to hero the youtube or instagram or any of the other socials you do me a great favor so yeah if you i always fuck up the closing what the fuck so yeah my guys see you on the next one peace